Now, you may be wondering how the static fire of Ship 37 out at Pad 1 went. This video is not about that. This video is the twisting, windy turns, the interesting story that got the ship to that point, so stick around. Uh, spoilers, it was aborted. Here in the <laughs> Star Factory, we've got a hot staging ring. There in the background, <laughs> there is a more different hot staging ring, the integrated hot staging ring. You can see the uh, little pencil-shaped parts there in the background. And then there's a forward dome that we spotted through the windows there. Caesar are getting a couple good shots there, those nighttime shots that let you see into the factory so well. Hey, that's cool. Look, the tool weight is on there, three-point minimum barrel ring, uh, WLL, barrel ring wall maybe. Here you've got a couple nose cones with all the uh, TPS attachment pins on them. Uh, I mean, look, there, there was a static fire ad attempt. And there was an entire discussion about, well, if it's static fires, are we going to edit this video and put it in or not? And so I figured we'd lead with that. There's a tiled barrel section. You can see it's not a complete part of a ship, but it's got the tiles on it. It's got the pins on it. It's got some, uh, there's the barrel section. There's ship 37 back in Mega Bay 2. You can see that one of the flaps is visible there, even though those headlights are really bright. Down at the bottom, you can see a lifting sling raising up and i think this is scaffolding coming down do we see scaffolding there those lights seriously you gotta like put your thumb over it you, that works if you're there in person it doesn't work on the video <laughs> the, the video frames the photons have already ruined the exposure once it gets baked into the video so here we go with our with our winding twisting travelous tale of <laughs> Ship 37 headed to the launch pad. Uh, not the launch pad today, the testing pad is where it's headed. Same thing, it's just that it is not going to be used for a launch, it's only going to be used for the test as part of this campaign. So you can see it rolling down the road from some of our uh, cameras there that it went past. And I mean, I say twisting tail, it's not that twisty. There's like a curve here at the Y where the roadblock is, then it's gonna turn, it's gonna go straight for a while. And there's like, oops, see, there you go, look, here's the turn. All right, that's where the roadblock is right there. And then it turns and it's going out down towards the uh, launch pad. I imagine we're going to get the other angle. Yep, there you go. See, mostly straight road there. And it's going to get down to the to the uh, launch site turn. It's got a curve to do there. How, how much do we still get to see? Yeah, you started to see a turn and then we switched views. This is going on the far side of Tower 2 there. Da -da 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 little legs. Can somebody animate little legs and like post it on X or something for me? You know, like, the, the outfit where the, the chicken or the dog looks like it's got Popeye arms and it's, like, running down the... Y'all know what I'm talking about. Don't act like you don't, even if you're too cool to admit it. Uh, here we've got the ship arriving all the way over and not wasting any time going directly between the chopsticks. We'll come back to that in just a second. But let's run out to Massey's real quick. Attention Massey's. There will be a lot of venting from ship 38 in two minutes. Bob venting from ship 38, two minutes. Okay, okay. I, I knew that when I saw that, I was supposed to be quiet so that the PA announcement could be heard. I got a special warning from the editor. Thank you, Thomas. Uh, and then I just shut up so y'all could listen to the alert, the PA announcement there. Hopefully the uh, that came through. You see the payload bay is open there. Right? The little uh, Pez dispenser doors are open. But this, again, is all the way over at Massey's. This is ship 38 not ship 37, right? I don't know, there you go. We just did this really neat tilt past that. And uh, there you can sort of see inside a little bit. Now, why? Why Why is it open? Why would you do that? Is it closed inside? Is there uh, plastic taped up or something? I don't know. But anyways, there's Booster 13's aft section. We saw a lot of that in the last video. If you saw that one, we talked about those uh, green interior bells versus the one there that isn't. Like, look, there's some down on the bottom as well. Um, you may have also seen that Breaking Space video where we saw the Raptor wreckage drive by some of our cameras over at uh, McGregor. Uh, first, we saw three engines go by, and we're like, oh, what are those from? And then we saw a lot more engines go by, and we saw a, uh, an identifier on one of them that I, th I think pointed to Booster 11. Make sure you check out uh, the Breaking Space video over on the other channel, and uh, I don't know if we'll have a follow-up on that or what the plan with that is, but uh, in any event, a little bit of welding happening there, too. We see a lot of welding. I don't need to describe every welding, right? So here we go. This is ship 37. We're back at pad one. 
chopsticks doing something very strange. This normally, t like, I, I promise, this never happens. This, this isn't normal. Uh, it's supposed to be a booster there. It's so weird for there not to be a booster and the starship to get lifted up and then put down. It's, it, it's not supposed to fit, right? A couple of gratuitous engine shots. Hey, also notice the stiffeners. Do you see the rings around the RVAX, the big engine bells on the outside with the white stiffeners that help hold them uh, during a sea level, like when they're in atmosphere? Going to do some stuff. Those, those are there intentionally for testing like this, right? But uh, great shot there by Jack catching those engine bells. Hey, there's a drone there in the background, too. It's like, oh my gosh, I got to get out of the way. That was a very <laughs> frenetic movement for that drone to make. I think it was behind it. I don't think it was going to get smashed by the ship. Notice the aft moving slightly to the right. Oh, yeah, look at that. They're doing like little announcements. Or little announcements, little adjustments. That's not an announcement. That's an adjustment. And look at the chopsticks. Get that lined up. Like, it really is a cool system. The drone is looking around there as well bobbing like a camera cork in the river of launch. I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> then we see ship 37 over there on pad one. By the way, Jack took some amazing stills of that sort of framing. Uh, we got them over in the shop. We'll link them in the video or something like that down below. But Jack really did a fantastic job, like a pure art shot with beautiful framing of the really weird ship uh, being mounted directly to the OLM with its little star stool, ship adapter, whatever. Some crews working on it here. Hey, more framing like this. Like, this is just, <laughs> it's just a cool shot. It's crazy how the QD is nowhere near the ship, and they have, you can't see it here, but they have a little Scorpio, scorpion stinger attached to the bottom of the ship. Well south of the, well south of the TFR here, Jack getting a fantastic drone shot. I love the waves in the shot there. It just gives it, like, life. Like, this is a place, right? It's not just the... I don't know. What's the right way to say that? Like, like it's... The waves give it, like, activity, right? I don't know. Natural activity. Motion, right? Anyways. Uh, there's Pad 2 and Star Hopper over there as well. I'm going to zoom in on Star Hopper just a bit. The pink crane. We've seen that pink crane been running around as well <laughs> over there. And we're going to run back out to Massey's again. You can see the date changed. We get that a lot. Like, oh, why don't you put the date on every single thing? Well, when the date changes, like, mostly these are chronological. And when we go to the next day, we put a little tag that says what the next day is. We don't put it on everything because then every shot would have a every shot would have a date on it. It never really made sense to me. But here, back at Massey's, Ship 38 waiting cryo again. That door is still open, and I'm so surprised by that because I, the, isn't stuff going to get in? I tell you what, if, if I have a box, like a comms box or a battery box out there, and I leave it open for one day, it gets filled with junk. Bugs and sand and just bleh, because it's so humid and windy down there. But, uh, oh, whoa, engines have been removed. Look at that. There are actually quite a few engines that are missing from the top of the massive steampunk cog wheel gear thing. It looks like. Like, that should be on, like, an airship or something, right? Take all the engines out and put that on the side of an airship. Ah, Caesar's going to run over back to pad one and get this uh, approaching sunset shot. Not quite sunset yet, but we have the silhouette shot, maybe is what we call that. And there is the starship directly on the orbital launch mount. Person for scale down there, lower right. Now, if y'all watch Flame Trench, you know that... <laughs> goes in the square hole, right? You'll know the, the meme with the designer, and it's like the person keeps putting the wrong things in the hole. I want that for this. I want the designer, like, happy, and there's a booster, and it's like, right, the booster goes in the round hole. And then somebody takes the ship, and they, they put the ship where the booster's supposed to go, and the designer is like, what? No, that's not how it works. I don't know if anybody can Photoshop that. I have lots of ideas. I just don't have time to do them all, right? That's sort of how the neurons fire here in the, the brain of the commentator. <laughs> Flex hose moved. All right. Oh, look at that thing. I mean, judging by the size of the flange, I think that that's insulated largely, right? Or maybe it's a lot of... I mean, there's a lot of hoses going into that single sort of setup, and then how they come out. That is interesting. If I'm not mistaken, those are chill lines, right? 
it's so delightfully janky. It's like they're using slinkies to uh, connect all this stuff. Look at all the temporary flex hoses there. It's like, what's the fastest way to do it? Does it need to line up exactly? No, we just need to get the dang thing connected for a test. All right, we'll build a big static structure up to that point, and then we'll just install flex hoses. <laughs> it really is cool. Like, you don't see this level of problem solving usually from aerospace companies, right? It's, oh, oh, back to the drawing board and we're going to redesign everything and then like three years from now we'll have it and SpaceX is like, I don't know, cut off a ship QD and just attach it to the side and then we'll just put some hoses in it. Yeah, Whatever, we just got to get prop in it for a test. Uh, I like this, labeled tilt up ship 37. Thank you for making sure I said that correctly. It, it really is cool. Like here, while we're in the rapid iteration uh, development phase, I want things to be safe. Like I don't want Starship to be raining down on populated areas. But things like that, I absolutely love to see, right? I just, who cares if it lines up exactly? It doesn't have to. Use a flex hole. It'll work for this test. It may not be rapidly reusable over long periods of time, but we just need to get this test out of the way, right? We'll fix it. We'll fix it later. Oh, that's a really good shot by Caesar. I love the shiny on the left-hand side there. As the sun is sort of in that, that's a really nice shot, Caesar. Let's not forget, because poor neglected orbital pad 2 over here. It looks very busy, right? But uh, all the news is about ship 37. Oh, wait. Is that person taking down? No, assembling scaffolding. Okay, we're adding more scaffolding there. I thought scaffolding was coming down, which would be newsworthy. Um, assembling scaffolding less exciting than removing scaffolding, especially when there's so much scaffolding already. Down underneath, we get this uh, waterfall feature here. We see that on occasion. That's the top of the flame deflector. Two exits. Flame hit it in the top. They go out in both directions. But anyways, folks, hey, Ship 37, that static fire was aborted today. We covered it. I don't know how long we streamed. Like six hours or something like that. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow. If they do another test, we'll be here on the channel doing live commentary for you. We appreciate you hanging out with us and watching these videos. Have any questions, ask me down below. Comments, too. And we will see you nerds later.